Yeah. So when they make two interventions a day, that means four controls of uh, medical, yeah. medical controls. When the soldiers are working with blistering agents, such as mustard gas, they have to wear an additional layer in order to protect themselves from the deadly substances. Uh, on the action. Yeah. When they have uh, many things to do, like yeah. uh, decontaminating with, uh, with brushes and things like that, yeah. that is physically very heavy. The last part of the soldier's preparation to enter the toxic environment of the chemical weapons dismantling facility is to fit elastic bands around their wrists whilst they have double gloves. The elastic band, is that...? Uh... Yeah, that's to prevent uh, that something goes in, but they have double gloves, yes. they have the, um, the charcoal suit, but that's another <coughs> security, a second one or yeah. third one. Okay, Pity? Okay. Well, Entry, check. Stand by team, how you doing? Welcome. Come on. Stand by team. And they have to look what is. The footage you're about to see would have netted us a $25 million reward had it have been taken in Iraq. However, this was all filmed within a few hours' drive from central London. For every soldier killed in Iraq, there are at least 10 who have been seriously wounded, disabled or disfigured. It angers me that we can bring you such pictures as the soldiers who have given their lives in Iraq were asked to do so on the basis of a lie. We're here with Senior Warrant Officer GP Herman and we're at the control booth of the weapons dismantling facility. We're about to witness uh, the drilling of the shell so that it can be tested as to what substance is inside uh, and then we're going to look at the milling of the shell uh, to cut the top off to get the liquid agent from inside. Uh -huh. So I can give you a little explanation about uh, these consoles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. We have a screen. On this screen, we can see every detector in the factory because the whole factory is full of detectors. If you see the yellow boxes, these are there are two detectors. On the other side, are also two detectors, and I can see these are green. Then they are okay. Yellow is okay. If I have a red one, that means that's an alert. And this room, that's the drilling room. I know that because we are working with this. And the drilling room is now a red alert. But that's, fairly no, that's quite normal, because every day we are drilling some projectiles and there is a contamination inside. Due to the high pressures of the gases inside each shell, it is firstly cooled in a freezer, which reduces the pressure and any potential cloud leakage into the facility. The shell is then taken to the drilling machine, where a small insertion is made using a specialised drill bit, which is able to drill a hole in the shell and reduce the pressure inside in a controlled manner. This prevents any unnecessary contamination of the facility. The shell that is being worked on at the moment has been identified by neutron activation analysis to be liquid phosgene. Phosgene to this day remains a major industrial chemical used to make plastics and pesticides. At room temperature, phosgene is a poisonous gas. With well, the inside pressure of the projectile. Uh -huh. It's a thousand millibars, is it? Twelve hundred millibars, that's quite a lot of pressure. Ah, you can go till uh, four, five, six. With cooling and pressure, phosgene gas can be converted into a liquid so that it can be shipped and stored. When liquid phosgene is released, it quickly turns into a gas and stays close to the ground and spreads rapidly. Phosgene gas may appear colourless or as a white to pale yellow cloud. At low concentrations, it has a pleasant odour of newly mown grass, hay or green corn. Its odour may not be noticed by all people exposed. Phosgene was used extensively during World War I as a choking agent. Among the chemical agents used in World War I, phosgene was responsible for the large majority of deaths. At high concentrations, the odour may be strong and unpleasant. 
However, at lower concentration, phosgene is easily breathed in and the victim may not realise that they have been exposed until 48 hours later, when their lungs fill up with mucus and they choke to death. Phosgene does not have a shelf life and remains just as deadly as the day it was made, even after all these years. Does, uh, does phosgene uh, or any of the gases de deteriorate after time, or is this, is this still as, just as deadly as what it was when? Yes, it, 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 it even becomes more deadly because uh, after 90 years, uh, what is inside the shell is like brand new. Yeah. Because it has never been, it has never been in contact with air, yeah. so it keeps it, it keeps his uh, his uh, yeah, danger. Uh, Still just uh, as yes. dangerous. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes. Once the pressure is released, a sample is then taken to determine the exact chemical composition of the shell, which informs them of the best method of storage and disposal. The chemicals were often mixed to prevent the freezing in the winter months, to maintain their deadly delivery. Often before the storage can be safely done, they expose the chemical agent to a specialised solvent, which part breaks it down. Now you're going to have a transport back, yeah. the team is going in, closing the projectile and it goes to the refrigerator. Man on standby. You can go closer if you want, no problem. So he will show you that he is handling the, the samples. Just to test um, what Toxic yes. yes, you have the sample from the inside of uh, the shell. Yeah. yeah. This the sample comes here, and he is doing tests, and he will say to me, "Okay, this uh, pure phosgene or phosgene with a uh, chlorbenzene or uh, epirit or yeah. whatever." And I need that because I have to make the decision in which barrel that the toxic liquid goes in. So safe to because if I make a mistake there, you can have a very aggressive reaction. Right. So that's. To be very careful. Which, in your opinion, which is the worst um, chemical in terms of uh, um, dangerous? Blows your uh, always our irritant. Hydroxide. Hydroxide. What, yes. what does that That's do? the worst. Oh, that's uh, it's attacking the blood. Okay. Uh, it's really uh, very aggressive for your blood. Uh, and and uh, phosgene is uh, attacking the lungs. Yeah. Everything that is uh, from respiration. Like uh, suffocation. In suffocation. Yeah. The one that attacks the blood is, um, uh, is, is it lethal as well? Can it kill you? The, Excuse me? The one that attacks the blood, mm -hmm. can it kill you? Oh yes, yeah. oh yes, very quickly. Yes, yes, yes that's the worst one. Yeah. Once the chemical makeup of a shell is determined, the second part of the dismantling requires the separation of the booster charge from the chemical element. Well, I looked to, uh, to the photo, the X-ray photo of my uh, projectile, and I see that the edge of the liquid toxic uh, fluid is just under the booster yeah. so I have to mill inside the liquid never in the booster of course yes. if I mill in the booster it will explode yes so I have to mill it in, uh, in the liquid, liquid. Yeah. is it dangerous sending a soul through the liquid or? no 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 it's not that dangerous but uh, it's to prevent uh, too much contamination spreading it about the facility yeah. 